Hi, my name is Daniel Posny, and this is called Shifting Perspectives. And this morning, uh, we're going to talk about having permission, that you have permission. First, I want to let you know about the next event that's coming up here at the Hummingbird House in Cornville. It's um, calling in your soulmate. So um, that's a big one for people that either want to uh, activate their soulmate in an intimate way, because there's so many different ways to um, have a soulmate in your life. But mainly people are looking for an intimate soulmate. And so there are things that we can help kind of grease the wheels of that path to, to find your soulmate. I believe that our soulmate comes in exactly the right time for us. But there are things that we can do to kind of make sure that everything is prepared for that so that our experience with the soulmate is what it needs to be. <clears throat> All right. You have permission. This came about um, from a conversation I had the other day, and the woman was uh, really had a strong opinion about a couple things. And one of them was this uh, uh, Native American remedy called Black Sav. And when you say the word Black Sav to some people, the, the kind of feelers go up and sometimes the panic comes in. Um, but she had a pretty strong opinion about how this guy did this thing and he had this little thing on his body and he put a little bit on there and it turned into this big grapefruit sized thing. And um, she had another opinion about her friend and had breast cancer about it. And um, I, what I know is that I have my own direct experience. And uh, part of this is about that you have permission to have your own experience about anything. And uh, especially with fear-based opinions, they can be a lot stronger than uh, other opinions, other uh, positive opinions about things. Um, I remember when I went to Hawaii on um, a bicycle trip and I, I borrowed my brother's old mountain bike and I had a bicycle trailer and people were telling me that, well, if you're a spiritual person and you want to have a spiritual experience, you should go to Polihale, which is on the west side of the island. And uh, don't go to Anahola because that's where a lot of drug uh, deals go down and there's been a shooting there and that kind of thing. And uh, I wanted to have my own experience of it. So I went to both places. I went to a bunch of places, but I made sure that I included those. And... Uh, I think I went to Poly Holly first and uh, I got three or four flats while I was there. They got these trees there. They have these thorns and I got flats and there was trucks driving across the beach and didn't make it very, you know, quote, spiritual or calm or peaceful. Um, I, did, I did have a, a really beautiful time in the water, but everything else was just kind of loud and, and you know, noisy and pain in the butt kind of thing. And then I went to Anahola, and yeah, you could feel the kind of element that it was kind of sunk down into a, a, a neighborhood that didn't feel great, but I still wanted to have my own experience. And it was during that stay in Anahola when I was lying in my tent, and I had this vision of the earth in front of me with all these figures all standing, you know, way bigger than they should be, but they're all like if you had a globe and they had all these figurines all planted on the earth and all in unison, they all turned, they all made of light and they all turned and they all looked at me. And I just got this feeling of oneness uh, coming over me. And that was at Anahola. So, you know, when society starts having their opinion about things and you should be fearful about this and that, you can see how, and I'm sure you can see through movies that talk about the future, there's this tendency for us to kind of get squeezed down into, we don't know what's best for us. And the government or the people that are in authority know what's, you know, what is better for us than we do. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to keep you safe for that kind of, so that's kind of the theme that goes along in the new movies of the future. And you can kind of see that kind of play out with um, your well-meaning friend, uh, friends and family, relatives that they're trying to keep you safe, but it's really those, uh, the Iggy Pops and the Madonnas and the Princes and the Michael Jacksons and the Gandhis that all kind of stir that shit up and 
cause us to kind of look outside the box a little bit. And those people we need to kind of be the rebels and uh, explore that. So this is this is part of um, activating or just reminding uh, myself and you, if you want to hear this message about having permission um, to explore, to have an adventure. So I'll just read what I wrote there this morning. In case nobody has reminded you, reminded you, you do have permission. Not that you actually require it, but you do. Society has given us the impression that you are not allowed to do things that are, quote, unsafe, to use medicines like black salve or uh, inventions like rife te technology that have stories attached to them to not follow the norm of what is accepted and expected. We've been lulled, guilted, and shamed into believing that we will hurt, hurt someone eventually and become a bad person. That was a lot of, that was a big part of the whole uh, COVID and lockdown and everything. There's a lot of guilt and shame on both sides of the equation. And uh, I remember there was a big thing that, you know, we're all, we're doing our part. And um, if you're a good person, basically, you'll do what the government tells you to do. And that was, that was a big, um, uh, what's the word, uh, propaganda that was put on people and that put people in a lot of precarious positions. People lost jobs, they lost their families, um, they lost their loved ones that they couldn't see, you know, either whether in a, in a home or something. A lot of, a lot of things came out of that. A lot of good things came out of it too. But um, I remember there's a lot of like the energy of guilt and shame in that. Decades of this eventually causes some of us to lose our gumption, our creativity, and our sense of adventure. What if we accepted and embraced more? Like the, the conversation I was having the other day, she was um, uh, really upset with, you know, with fear about her friend that uh, had breast cancer. And she was using this medicine to try and um, help the breast cancer. And she was really had a lot of fire inside of her about how she did this wrong and that kind of thing. But what if, what if we radically accepted and embraced people's own ideas about what is best for them? Because we do know that, you know, it really is the belief about the placebo or about the medicine that we're taking, that we're using. But if someone comes up and says, that's not best for you and that's going to kill you and that's going to be wrong for you, you're really not helping them because it really comes down to the belief of that thing. And if you're coming in as a, as a negative influence in that, you're, you're in, your intention is good, but you're really not helping. So um, what if we allowed and embraced everyone's idea about love and about what's best for them? And even if it's not good for them in some way, that we allow them to have that experience that they're supposed to have. And we don't, we don't get in there too much about, you know, uh, changing everybody and looking out for everybody. And I know that that, that kind of that sinks in my heart about wanting to do the best for humanity and that, that kind of thing. But there is a balance in that. And then I kind of, nowadays I just kind of sprinkle with that, um, trying to change things outside of me. Um, so there, there's just some, um, presence of being uh, when you're when you're thinking about helping other people or saving other people and that kind of thing that um, we're never born and we'll never die and people are we're all having our own experience so what if that's the case what if we judged less what if we judged less if we allowed and embraced more and we judged less and I know the world looks like it needs that judgment. And it looks like we, we need to not allow things, some bad things to happen. And I know what you're thinking, like child slavery and all that stuff. And I'm totally not condoning anything illegal or anything like that. I'm just saying that there are lesser things that we try to judge and um, hold back people from having their own experience. So I'm not talking about the the great abuses of the world and child slavery and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm talking about uh, just the ones that we can handle, you know, the lesser ones. What if we allowed our relatives and our friends to have their own opinions? 
And that's why I let this woman just talk. She wasn't looking for any um, real two-way conversation. She was just, she had an opinion and we just let her talk. And um, I, even when I came in and I said, well, you know, you know, I, this is what the, the science and the, um, the research has shown me about this particular um, ailment. And what was happening with this woman is this is what was happening. And I tried to explain it to her, but I got resistance back. So I just, I just let her have her opinion. I did, was not trying to, to change her opinion about it. And that's a hard thing, you know, that's a challenging thing for my ego to just let it be, just let her have her strong opinion. But when it comes down to uh, things like Black South, where there's, if you look on the internet for Black South, um, there's a lot of fear-based opinions about things and very based in science and that kind of thing. And uh, you've got to be careful with it. And and totally true. You got to be careful with that stuff. It's super strong medicine. And it's worked for me for over 10 years. And so I've had skin cancer, little spots on my face and spots on my back that, you know, got around, you know, nickel quarter size, had one on my face. And I was told, you know, do not put any of that on your face. <laughs> <laughs> and before I heard that, <laughs> I put it on my face and um, I put it on overnight. And, and the guy told me, do not put it on overnight. <laughs> I put it on overnight, put a bandage over it. And, the, and within about a week, the whole thing got so big, about got about a quarter size. And I started to freak out. Maybe I did something wrong. I went to the doctor and oh, I did something stupid. I explained to the doctor what I did. And he didn't know what to say, but, you know, he brought in some fear about it. And I, I got done with that. I said, man, what did I do? <laughs> Eventually it fell off. And now there's no indication of skin cancer on my face. And uh, I've used it many, many times on my back. And uh, so what I do is I work on the emotional part behind skin cancer. And then I'll treat it with something natural like that, which is super powerful. And it's, yeah, it can really do some damage if you leave it on there too long you put too much on i what i did was i put like a little toothpick size thing on there and i just rubbed it in there with my finger and then after five minutes i washed it off so that's all i needed was just a little bit in there and then wash it off so um but it's you know you can buy it in a lot uh, different places now than you ever could before you kind of had to you know black self you had to whisper it but now you can get it into in uh, different natural food stores and it's available. Um, it's just a, it's a mixture of blood root and some other plants and man, you can really feel it working. So anyway, what I'm saying, what this is all brought up is that I have permission to use whatever I want to use. You have permission to use whatever you want to use. And if it causes you harm, you also have permission to do that. I know that's a radical way of thinking and nobody would want that for you, but you have permission to do that. We have permission to basically do a lot of things that we don't think that we have permission to do. To do. You are an amazing um, creator of realities and worlds probably. And you have been the rule maker and the rule breaker and the rebel and the follower. You've been all of it. So um, this is just your experience of realizing that there may be a lot of laws and rules and things to, quote, keep you safe. And, and this is something that's not good for you or you should be doing this. You still have permission, no matter what anyone says. I know this is, this is for somebody on this, this video. You still have permission to do what you feel is best for you. And especially if it doesn't affect anyone else, they may get their emotions affected. But if it doesn't directly affect anyone else, you have full permission. And that, you know, that brings up this idea of um, you know, people going to different places. So if they're suffering so much, they have permission to let go of their life. And there's, there's practices in India where people can go in such a deep meditation that can cause their own death. And it's known as, as, as like the most enlightened, peaceful way to go. If you have realized that you have 
um, completed your task here, to completed your experience here, you can go to meditation and do that. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying that the radical, most radical way of you having permission to do something is your own life. So let's take it back down to normal stuff. You have permission to eat and drink and use on your body whatever you feel is best for you. And uh, it may not be good for you, but you still have permission to do that. Um, if you wanted to go to a different state, if you wanted to ride a bicycle, if you wanted to have lobster, if you didn't want to have lobster, uh, if you wanted to get a vaccination or not get the vaccination, you still have permission. There may be consequences with different choices that we make, but if you're okay with those consequences, it's still your right as a sovereign being to have permission to do that. So I wonder if this stirred up some stuff, <laughs> but guess what? I have permission to do this. <laughs> and the greatest permission that we have is this. It's called decision. It's called making a choice. That is the, the greatest thing that, that causes us. <laughs> I heard that what makes us human is, uh, what is it? Is it, is it a crosswalk? Which uh, um, mark off the crosswalks? What that's saying is that if you're not a robot, you don't know which is a crosswalk and which is a tree. You're human, so you get to make choices and decisions. <laughs> so that is just such a, an amazing thing that in any moment we can decide wow, I'm separate from God. I'm one with God. <laughs> we could go as far as we want to go in just in our decision and our preference. Oh, I don't love myself. I do love myself. I'm on planet Earth. I'm on planet X. We can make whatever decision that we want. And people will tell us, you can't do that. But then we can. We can make those decisions and long as you feel good about those decisions and you feel like you're expanding, I feel that's that's nothing wrong with that. If we feel like we're expanding in our heart and in love and in creation, go for it. All right. Thank you. I love you. Bless you.